This video covers PowerSDR 2.7.2 KE9NS Revision 110216T11 <clears throat> and I've added uh, more to the time sync function uh, in the spotter window. So you go to spotter. Now normally like for the beacon scanner you need the your PC clock to be synchronized properly with with the uh, with the real time so that uh, when it says these stations are transmitting they're actually transmitting uh, you know see so your PC clock needs to be set accurately and there are, the Windows has a built-in way of doing it and so forth but I've added a, a button here that goes out and does the same thing if you just click the button and you don't touch anything else uh, you click that and it goes out and it tells you that you need to be in admin mode so <clears throat> when you launch power SDR the icon you want to right click on the icon and and uh, set you know set it up so it launches as admin all the time and then it'll give it gives power SDR the authorization to update your time clock so when it it connects with uh, it connects over the internet with NIST and then NIST sends it the time value and then uh, power SDR will compensate for the delays and so forth and set set your clock accurately but the other way to do it is using the WWV stations uh, you select a station here that's transmitting with a good signal strength right now we got an S9 and uh, when you're ready click on the, uh, the use WWV and then hit the time sync button so now it'll attempt to lock on and then you see some data coming through here <clears throat> uh, magnitude of the signal uh, it has to drop your sample rate down to 96 K uh, it looks for these they call them P frames every 10 seconds there's a new P frame and it got the time sync P frame uh, so now it starts to read the data and uh, you can hear the tick sound and that light should follow the tick sound that indicator so it's reading the coded information binary coded decimal in a uh, kind of pulse coded modulation subcarrier and then when it's all done reading that it there's more to it than there's there's six frames but it's it only needs to read uh, frame two and three for the time of uh, the minutes and the hour and then if you believe it read it good it wasn't um, you know that the tick mark was following the noise you know was following the tick sound and so you believe this number to be correct uh, UTC not local but UTC you click this to cycle through local and then UTC uh, that's the time it read of off of the, the time coded information in there and then power SDR is got a timer running in the background waiting for you to hit yes or no if you hit yes now it'll update your clock and it adds in all the extra time while it was waiting for you to click the yes button and so if you want to see the signal if you zoomed in here uh, what, uh, what I normally do is I narrow the filters down when I'm running so if I show you while it's running I click this button again hit this so now I'm looking at a small, small band right here, and uh, you can see, you can actually kind of see the pulses, and they vary in length, three different lengths of that pulse. You can hear it, but uh, I wrote a little decoder to actually do the decoding. So it's picking up one again, and it could take up to a minute and a half because you might actually ha you know you might have just missed the last start of the minute and you got to go all the way around and wait a whole minute and a half for the final decoding and then when it's done you get this pop up it was on my other monitor and you can update the clock anytime you want and then and then it turns itself back off when it's done and if you had the spotter window going, it just pauses the updates. So then when 